You're listening to Operation Self Reset with Jake Naraki. What is going on, you freaking awesome people? Welcome back to Operation Self Reset. My name is Jake Naraki, coming to you live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where each and every week we dive into a different topic in the world of personal development. There are no ads, there are no sponsorships uh, this go around because you know what? I want to get back to the true content that can assist you in your own personal journey, your own personal reset. For some odd reason, you're listening to this podcast because you want a little more. You want a little more motivation, a little more clarity. You want a little more knowledge in getting in contact with yourself to assist you in the journey that you want to take. And for that, I thank you for joining me. Hopefully this podcast and of course all the other podcast shows out there can assist you in whatever endeavor that you are looking for in your own personal life. Now today we're going to be talking about kind of the part two of my sister's birthday party. Now last week I talked to you guys about my sister's birthday party. She turned 40 years old um, and the party happened this Uh, past weekend, so just a couple of days ago, and I want to tell you guys how it went, and of course, my feelings and ideas of, you know, what what went right, what what went wrong, and I'm not saying what went wrong is in the party was a disaster, it was a great party, we had a lot of fun, but there was a board-breaking presentation by yours truly, and there were some people that didn't step up to the plate. So with that, I'm going to kind of pause there and, and rewind the tape here a little bit and give you a little more depth on what happened and, and to give you some tools and tactics to assist you in moving forward in your own personal life. So this isn't just a recap of my sister's birthday party, but nonetheless, here we go. So first off, my sister turned 40 years old. She wanted to have a birthday bash. Cool. She added a bar in the basement, and her idea was to have between 120 people show up to this party. Cool. At the party, she wanted to do something different. Julie, my sister, is a fan of the show. She said, hey, you know what? I know that you know how to teach people how to break boards. I think breaking boards would be really useful and helpful, especially now that I'm 40 years old. I'm looking to enhance myself to kind of get you know back in touch, and I think breaking a board would be kind of something challenging, fun, and of course would be memorable for my birthday party. I said, cool, let's do it. So I go to the hardware store. I get 70 12 by 12 inch boards. I'm all jacked up. I'm ready to go. I got my speech ready to go. My sister parties hap- My sister parties happens. I uh, perform a little speech. I'm hoping that my speech can motivate and energize the individuals in that audience. Um, out of the, I would say probably 80 to 90 people that were in the room at that moment, only about 35 people broke the board. Now, interesting facet. 80, 90 people, 35 broke the board. I was preparing for around 70 people to break the board, or at least close to, and needless to say, uh, my expectations were broken in half. Now, why is it that some people choose to step up to the plate and some people don't? Now, the biggest thing that I can think of is when an opportunity comes into anybody's life, you're at a birthday party, for example, you're breaking a board, which sounds ridiculous for a birthday party, but nonetheless, there's an opportunity to challenge yourself, to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Why is it that we don't challenge ourselves? Why is it when an opportunity arises, we don't go, yeah, that's me, I'm going to do it, I'm doing it, and you run up there like a crazy person, and you get in line, and you're ready to go. Well, the reason why we don't is pretty obvious, is because of pain. Pain comes in many forms. Pain is, number one, physical, but number two, emotional. Number one, physical. We understand that if you're going to be breaking a board, chances are you may hurt yourself. You may injure yourself. You may break a nail. You may stub a finger. You break a knuckle, break a wrist. That sounds really extreme, right? I mean, we're just breaking little boards here. It's not like I have a you know a, a maple tree that we have to chop down with our hands. It's pretty straightforward. I give a good technique. I give a good demo, and then we're off to the races. People are breaking boards left and right. But if you do not have the certainty that you are able to break the board, chances are you're going to hurt yourself. It's as if two rams are in the wild and they're bashing each other in the head. If one ram has more energy than the other, that ram with the least amount of energy will get injured. But if both rams come together and hit each other as hard as they can, neither of them are going to get injured. Just like American football. When you have a running back running full speed forward and you got a defensive person running right at them, they collide and they make a big collision 
but they both get up and they're totally fine because they're going with 100%. So we understand that if you go with 100% into something, chances are you may not have physical pain. With that, the reason why I believe a lot of people in that room that day did not want to step up to the plate is because of the physical pain as pain aspect. They maybe just got their nails done. Maybe they just got it done with wrist surgery. Maybe they are a chiropractor and a concern on how their hand is going to handle breaking a board. Regardless, you know, that takes out a majority of people. But I think the other type of pain is more important. I think this type of pain affects even the craziest people. And the, um, the emotional pain is that of rejection, the emotional pain of fear, like the fear of the unknown, the fear of, am I going to be able to do this? So you got rejection. You got the fear of the unknown, the fear of embarrassment, getting up there in front of people and not able to do it. What happens then, right? All these people, these strangers are now laughing at you. And other fears and other pains associated with emotions that will dictate if you choose to stand up or choose to stay seated in a moment when an opportunity comes to you. And so it was really interesting to watch the audience. Now, I only had a couple of minutes to pep talk them. And obviously, you've been listening to my voice. If you have been a fan of the show, I should say, for many years, you know my style. You know my approach. If you were sitting in that room, chances are you would probably, you would probably do it, right? I mean, you're, you're a fan of Operation Self Reset. You get it. You're, you're, you're supporting, obviously, the cause of the show. And with that, you know that by the words that I say on a weekly basis would hopefully inspire you to step on up, take action, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, and to try, to try to break the the board. But for the people that were there, obviously I didn't have enough grooming, enough time to really pep talk them. So a lot of them were probably on the fence. And maybe if it was a seminar, maybe by then, you know, a couple hours in, I would, they would build trust with me and they would trust that I knew what I was doing. So they would attempt it. I don't know. I couldn't talk to every single person there, but it was surprising on how little, the little amount of people chose to walk on up and to step forward and break the board. So the question you got to ask yourself is, why is it we don't go after the opportunities? Is it because of pain? Is it because we don't, we don't have the knowledge? Is it because we don't have the experience? Like I never experienced anything like that. I don't know if it's possible. Um, you know, can a female or a male break a board? I don't know. I haven't seen it with my own two eyes live in person. Um, you know, is it a trust issue? They just don't trust me. So with that, they go, well, this guy's a lunatic. You know, how is he qualified? Um, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of beliefs that go on within somebody's mind to jump up and to tackle the opportunity. So the question remains is, if the opportunity presents itself, are you willing to take it? Now, breaking a board is pretty um, abnormal. It's not something that is presented on a day-to-day basis. But there are other opportunities that present it all the time, but yet we choose not to jump at them. Maybe take a job promotion, change careers, get a different boyfriend or girlfriend, move different locations, travel, um, you know, join, do a different fitness routine, get uh, creative and start your own business, uh, take the journey of, of self-discovery, go to a week-long seminar. The, the ideas and theories are totally, totally endless. So the question is, if the opportunity arises, are you going to take it? And if you say no out of the gate, well, then chances are is that maybe you're one of those people that needs a little more research. You need to investigate a little further. But if you're the person that goes, yes, opportunity arises, I'm going to jump on it. Maybe is it true that those types of people, better things happen to them? I don't know. There's maybe a a great study out there, um, a long-term study can understand. But the only thing that I want to kind of blend out here is to get very clear is that there's two different mindsets when any opportunity comes up to you, regardless of what it is, what you're doing. And that's a fixed, fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Now, this is from a famous book called Mindset, and it, her name is uh, Carol Dweck. And she is a researcher, I think from Harvard, I can't remember for sure. But it basically talks about people that have a open mindset compared to a closed mindset are going to go further. 
that people that have a open mind are going to experience life a little differently, a little more extravagantly, a little more daring than a person that has a closed mindset or a fixed mindset, I should say. Those are the terms, open mindset or a fixed mindset. And a fixed mindset is saying, I don't need to break the board. It's ridiculous. Why should I do that? There's no change that is going to happen to me. It sounds like a waste of energy for me to step on up, put my beer down, and to do that. As opposed to an open mindset is going to be like, heck yeah, that sounds crazy and cool. I'm going to attempt it. Let's see if I can do this. I want to prove to myself that I can break a board. This is here to support you know, Julie for her birthday. I want to be a part of this, and it's going to be epic, right? As we can see, those are very obvious. And so the, the message here I want to say to you is, number one, Try your best to have an open mindset. Try your best to be open to everything. There's a great movie. Um, I don't know if it's a great movie. I haven't seen it in a really long time. But with Jim Carrey, and it says, uh, I think it's Yes Man or something like that, where he goes around and says yes to everything. Anytime an opportunity arises in his life, he says yes. He can't say no. And because of that, his world opens up. And I'm not saying your world is going to open up. You're going to be this totally different person. Life is kumbaya and you're making billions of dollars. But what I'm trying to say is that your life will be radically different as opposed to having a fixed, closed mindset. So that's that's big point right there. And the second reason why, um, I re- or the second reason I really want to get into here in a little bit is this. When I was asking my sister, what is it, the, the theme? What does she want to accomplish? She wanted to be... Uh, She wanted to enhance her kindness and positivity moving forward, past her 40th birthday party, you know, another 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, whatever the case is. And, excuse me, all of us want to be more, see more, do more, and we all want to be more fulfilled. And that fulfillment can come in an arrangement of different keywords that you feel that you're lacking now that you want more of later. And so the question is, why is it that you don't have those feelings more present in your life? Why is it that you you need to like set a set a goal of I want to be more positive or I want to be more enthusiastic or more motivated or more dedicated or more organized, whatever the K, whatever the keyword is for you. Why is it that we need to remind ourselves of the simplistic ideas of enhancing our life? And the reason why I think we kind of get held up and the reason why we have to remind ourselves is because of the drips of life. In our life, day to day, there are different drips that fall on top of us. Drips of stress, drips of late nights, drips of kids, drips of uh, lack of motivation, drips of rejection, drips of um, financial uh, headaches. All these different types of drips have fallen on us through the course of our life. When you're in high school, the drips really don't matter. It seems as soon as you break out of high school, you start to understand the drips, the drips of decisions, the stri- the drips of where should you go to school? Should you even go to school? Should you go study abroad? Should you travel? Should you just work at a bar? And then from there, the drips of I need a car, the drips of how am I going to afford this and that, the drips of where am I going to eat? Now I feel lonely. I want to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a husband or a wife. I want to start a family. I need to find a career. Um, I'm stressed about this or that. As you can see, the drips fall upon us. And this drip idea comes from from nature, you know, stalactites and stalagmites. Um, if you can rewind the clock when you're in the fifth grade, the teacher talked about stalactites and stalagmites. Stalactites and stalagmites are these formations formed over thousands of years where in the damp cave, drips fall off the ceiling of the cave and, be, and inside of the drip is these very high levels of minerals. And these minerals fall to the floor and the, the minerals kind of compound on top of each other. And over time, these rock formations are formed. And, you know, if you don't know what they look like, go on Google or something like that. Stalactites and stalagmites. And over course of a very long time, these formations are made. Now, the same applies to us. Like I said, early on, the drips don't really affect us. But just like stalactites and stalagmites, these drips over a very long time do affect us. So you remember the term of, uh, you know, shake it off or the, you know, the, that rolls off my back. That may be true, but there are some heavy hitting drips that really do build up on us over time. And that's why today at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, whatever you are, you're different today than you were when you're in your early teens, mid 20s or such because dr- the drips of life have affected you. 
So the question is, how do we break out of this routine? How do we break out of our new norm? Now, your new normal, the, like I said, how you are different from you were when you were 20 or so, is the new normal is called the normalization of deviance. It basically means unacceptable behavior over time now becomes acceptable. So maybe back in the day, you were fearless. Maybe you were a chatty Cathy. Maybe you love challenges and obstacles and you're a go-getter. But yet today, you're not. And the new you is accepting that. Even though when you're back in your early 20s or teens, you could never imagine yourself not wanting it or going after it or becoming more, doing more, being more, seeing more. So... There you go. The normalizations of deviance, who you are today. So the question is, how do we break out of the funk? How do we break out of this nonsense? How do we get back to the true you? Well, there is unfortunately no magic pill. There's no uh, shake to take. There's no tea, coffee, any supplement that you can take to get back to your true self. The only way to do it is relentless improvement. And, and relentless improvement doesn't need to mean doesn't need to be a week-long, month-long seminar or some crazy experience. It can be little things done daily, daily disciplines that can truly affect your life. And for here, for right now, I'm going to share with you guys three ideas, okay? Number one, the attitude of gratitude. The attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is a very popular keyword. Uh, gratitude is a very popular thing right now in the wellness, positive thinking realm. Gratitude is nothing more than being kind, sharing generosity with other people. And Yale did a long-term study with, study with gratitude. They took uh, participants and they hooked their brain up to electrodes and they had the participants send a text message, call a long lost friend or coworker or family member, and lastly, give a compliment to a person face to face. And they recorded what type of activity happened within the brain when the participant said gratitude, grateful things for other individuals. A lot of cool things happened. Number one, um, they realized that dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins were released. These chemicals are happy chemicals. And they realized that the amount of chemical that was re released was the same, or I should say identical to, as if you took a 10 milligram pill of antidepressant medicine, whatever that is. There's a million different companies that are making antidepressants. But regardless, if you want to feel better, more present, more alive, more engaged, try being grateful to yourself and, of course, the people that surround you. The attitude of gratitude can absolutely change your perspective of life. If you change the attitude that you walk through life with, you're guaranteed to feel those effects on a day-to-day -day basis and to go out into the world and be that type of person that you want to in whatever regard. That's number one. Number two, positive thinking versus positive knowing. Positive thinking versus positive knowing. Positive thinking is is like the little engine could, that could book. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. As opposed to positive knowing. Positive knowing is the idea of I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. To bring it full circle to the board breaking experience is this. Is if you were to walk up to break a board, you would be thinking to yourself, I think I can do this, I think I can do this, I think I can do this. Do this. That is positive thinking. You're thinking about being positive in that experience. But as soon as your hand starts to practice Juno chopping that board, the fear of different things is going to replace your positive thinking. Because positive thinking isn't definite. It's not anchored anywhere. It's just thoughts that are in encompassing the experience that you're going to be having in a couple of seconds. And when you start to realize, oh my gosh, this might not work. Oh my gosh, I might get rejected. Oh my gosh, the board might not break. Oh my gosh, I might break my, break my wrist. The positive thinking will totally dissipate and the emotion and fear will come on in and you possibly could not, will not succeed. As opposed to positive knowing. Positive knowing is standing in line going, I got this. I, I, I feel confident. I know I can push my hand through the board. You're practicing the technique as you're standing in line. And when you get up to the board, you're not thinking that you can. You know that you will. And that's the total big change. They have found great research and understanding in uh, positive psychology that people that state that they know that they'll be positive, they know that they'll get in shape, they know they'll lose the weight – 
have that identity that it's certain that it's going to happen as opposed to I think I can lose five pounds or I think I can wake up tomorrow morning. It's a simple shift in the way you present it to yourself and it's a simple simple shift of the internal chatter that goes on within your mind. If you're able to position and, and um, kind of pivot from thinking to knowing, your world is going to change. And lastly, a very iconic kind of quote, you're the average you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. If you have a second, maybe when you get to work or you're at home, whatever the case is, take out a sheet of paper. Write down your five closest friends, coworkers, people that you hang out with on a regular basis. It cannot be family. Family is a totally different beast. Those are people <clears throat> excuse me, that are in your life not because you want to be with them, but because you have to. It's association through family. So this only works with uh, friends, coworkers, stuff like that. Write down your income. Write down your hobbies. Write down your political views, religious views, theories on the world, um, exercise habits, all different types of things. Now, write out your top five's uh, income, habits, routines, health, all different types of stuff. Chances are your income, your ideas, your religion, your political views are going to be pretty darn close to the five closest people that you hang out with. Now, that may not be that big of a shocker, but the question is, if you are looking to enhance yourself, if you're looking to move forward, if you're looking to get bigger and be more, do more, see more, you need to change the people that you associate with on a regular basis. Now, I'm not saying to quit your old fr group of friends and to find people that are in alignment to where you want to go, but we can all understand that if you want to, let's say, um, work out at 4 o'clock in the morning, you need to have or start to meet the people that you're going to be working out with at 4 a.m. That's why 4 a.m. workout classes aren't just you go there and work out, chances are you're going to build relationships. Because once you build relationships with people in your workout class, you're going to be more committed, more dedicated to wanting to make sure your butt gets up at 3.30 so you can be at the gym or in that classroom at 4 a.m. Because that is your new circle of influence. Easier said than done. I totally get it. I'm not saying to quit your friends once again. All I'm saying is be aware of the people that you're hanging out with because if you want to grow, if you want to change, you need to change the people that you hang well out with on a regular basis. So once again, these ideas are not game changing. They're not going to alter your existence, but a little bit of knowledge, practice every single day can and will change the projection of where you're going. Everything that you experience around you is bumping you in different uh, different ways of your life. It's almost as if you're a, uh, um, uh, what is that called? A machine that, um, uh, uh, geez, I can't even think of it. You know, where the ball is in the pinball machine. Jeez. Man, oh man, I had a massive brain fart there, and I was going to stop the podcast and research it, but hey, this podcast is live, it's real, it's live, it's real, it's relevant, and most importantly, we don't press stop because this is a true conversation between me and you. So uh, thanks for muddling through some of my irritations. But nonetheless, almost like a pink pinball machine where the ball is getting bounced around the same with you. You know where you want to end up, but life will bounce you around a little bit. And it's interesting to think that one little different bumper, one little different rubber band can totally alter the direction of your life. If you use some of these tools on a day-to-day -day basis, I guarantee it, your perspective, your alertness, your overall well-being will change. And because of that change that happens today, it will change your future. So I think I've done enough talking today. Um, again, those three concepts, three ideas, gratitude, positive knowing, and circle of influence. Those are the three to possibly work on for the next week here. That is your homework. Try to at least have a practice of gratitude over the next five days. Have positive knowing instead of thinking. So when you start thinking positive, know that you will be positive. Know that things will work out, whatever the case is for you. And lastly, do a self-check on the people that you are hanging out with. And if you want to be more, do more, see more, maybe adjust that circle of influence just a little bit. So with that being said, I thank you for your time. Thank you for being a fan of Operation Self Reset. Until next week, Wednesday, go out there and be freaking awesome. We'll catch you guys next week, Wednesday. See ya.